We hebben natuurlijk geregeld contact met onze projectpartners in het buitenland. Een van deze partners is Mike Wamaya van project Elimu in Kibera, Kenia. We ondersteunen daar onder andere de uitgifte van voedselpakketten voor mensen die door de coronarestricties in problemen zijn gekomen. Ik sprak met Mike over de huidige situatie in Kenia. Mike, it's so good to see you again. What a nice time. Thank you so much. Thanks for having, uh, for creating the time to speak to us. It's been a long time uh, since we last met and perhaps there are some people who have not met you yet. So could you tell us a bit about yourself? Um, who are you? Where are you? And what yeah. are you doing right now? Yeah, so I'm uh, Mike Wamaya and uh, I'm a dance teacher here in Kibera. Kibera is one of the small slums. Uh, it's a very big slum in Nairobi. And uh, we, I run a very small organization, a grassroots movement, we call it, for young people and mainly children where I train them dance, but also I do a lot around um, uh, youth empowerment and also around the community empowerment in general. So we do a lot of activities. We do festivals every year. Not this year, we're not gonna do anything, but we also support young people through their school and through finding themselves and who they are and what they want for themselves and how to build it. Yeah, thanks. So we've we've worked together in the past, right? Haven't we, uh, Fastenaxi and, and your organization? Um, we were always very interested and, and um, very keen to get up to date on how everything's proceeding in uh, Kibera. But yes. then the world changed, didn't it? Corona came. Yeah. Um, what effect did the virus have on your surroundings uh, and specific, specifically Kibera? Yeah, uh, first of all, we are very grateful with the partnership we've had with Vaxenaxi because uh, through Vaxenaxi, we were able five years ago to build a school and uh, the school now serves, uh, was serving before COVID was serving like around 350 children and the school had a very proper decent uh, kitchen so the children were able to have access to meals. but. Uh, coronavirus came and uh, uh, we've had a lot of effects because um, majority of our parents um, lost their jobs and uh, the community was shattered and uh, being an informal settlement where we don't even have enough data as to the number of people living in here and there are no proper mechanisms to be able to put in tools to support people. So it was very hard to, uh, for some families to even have access to three meals or two meals a day. So with that also the rise in teenage pregnancy came so high. Also the rise in crime within the community came so high and um, it was very hard. So coronavirus have actually distorted a lot of our activities and broken down our community into almost nothing. But we are very grateful, slowly things are picking up. Yeah, what struck you most in the past few months? What what What's one of the things that stayed with you? So what stays with me is uh, uh, are people like, for instance, vulnerable people, and these are like the children-led households and also households that are um, led by sick people or old people. So they, they could not make any form of uh, employment. And so literally they had nothing for food, for instance. And uh, they were also not able to get some of the government support and NGO support because some of them don't even have access to mobile phone. Mm. And uh, the minors who depended so much on schools for a meal were not able to get these type of meals because um, schools are closed, so they are not part of any feeding system. So it was really hard for them. And uh, that's something that, to be honest, I just can't uh, forget because uh, I went to a house and saw children, they haven't eaten for three days. And uh, what they have is water. Mm. And their parents were blocked on the other side of the uh, country because they could not travel back to the city. So they relied on neighbors for handouts. And uh, sometimes they get, sometimes they don't. And um, when we were there, they were really you know, is a house led by a 16-year-old child. It's really painful and heavy to just see them through the COVID process. But you picked up the pace. Yeah. We, I mean, we, you, you said this can't go on like this. So you yeah, did something. 
we uh, always like uh, is when there is a challenge, it troubles us for like a couple of months, but then we have to design a solution by ourselves. And I'm very grateful with the support we received. We've been able to design a solution around it. Yes, now uh, we are much in contact. We are back doing our activities, trying to put all the precautions. Uh, yes, they're not back in school, but they come to our center for dance activities. They come for emotional support, but they also come for food support. So I'm very grateful, you know, like uh, we were able to pick ourselves up. Uh, you know, we reached out to friends and of course, Vaxinax, he just stood with us and um, we were able now to offer food support to the children. And that's the beauty of it, because now the community is coming back again. And uh, I'm really grateful that, um, yes, we can't offer full support to these children, but at least they know that we are here. And that's the most important bit. Yeah. How do you organize that, the food support yeah, so, within the yeah. restrictions? Yeah, so this was very intense. So what we did was uh, we came up with like pick up points. So in as much as there is restriction of movement, uh, we designed pick up points like small shops that people could go there and get like a voucher to get food. And with that voucher, you find like a food pack ready. So you just pick it and you go back home. So it's very close to where you live. You don't have to walk far. It's within Kibra. And also by that is keeping our local shops in business because our mm -hmm. shops were also in debt in terms of like people just took things from them and they were not paying. So yeah. it was very hard. So what uh, this did was we were able to pay them also as some sort of a commission and they are the ones who supply the goods. So we are just buying things from them and giving it to the community for free. That's and uh, that have also kept them in business mm -hmm. as the community is getting the food they needed. And uh, everyone is happy, at least uh, things are happening. That's a great, great way to handle this and a great example yes. for how things should be handled, I think. Yes. Thanks for that. Yes. Thanks for that. Yeah. But these solutions are, of course, um, temporarily. Yes. Temporary. Uh, I mean, um, I mean, this is not long term. How do you how do you see the future? Yeah, as uh, always, uh, my aim is now on how can we value add? Yes, COVID came in, but COVID also taught us a lesson. COVID taught us so much. COVID taught us how to be together. COVID taught us how to think of one another. But also COVID taught us on how we can value add the skills we have as parents. So I train children. Yes, it's in my strength. But it's also in my strength as an educator to look into my parents and train them and reach out to other people who are willing to help me in training our parents in terms of new skills that they can add on to whatever they have. In the end, it's all about elevating the people, right? Yes, yes, yes. And, and yes, we can feed them. But then after two, three years, what are we doing? Yeah, but by showing them how to do it. And with, with the training, we are bringing the best of the best in certain fields to come into Kibra. Yeah. So this is a forgotten place, a neglected place. And normally they say, okay, but bring them out. And now we're telling them, no, you come inside and train us from our comfort. And then from there, we'll be able to now uh, capitalize on the skills that we will get. That's great. It's great, Mike. Yeah. Great to hear. Yes. Your story again and how you are working towards a better future for everybody in Kibera. Yeah, we hope so. We hope yeah. it's going to work out. Thanks, Mike, for your time and for your story. Yeah. And we wish you, you so all much. the luck from the Netherlands. Yes. You guys, thank you guys so, so much. And uh, I wish you all the best. Same to you, Mike. And thanks again. Yeah. Thank you so much.